This is Malika Hook from the University of Colorado, and I'd like to present a case that I recently did with our glaucoma fellow, Haran Gabriesus, titled Visually Significant Cataract with Long Anterior Zonules and Pigment Dispersion. I'm going to focus on how long anterior zonules influence cataract surgery, but if you wanted to learn a little bit more about the specifics of long anterior zonules, please go to my YouTube channel and see a full talk on the topic. As it relates to cataract surgery, long anterior zonules encroach more than 1.5 millimeters onto the anterior capsule relative to the equator of the lens. This can sometimes be several millimeters more than the usual 1.5 millimeters, and you can imagine that this will influence the creation of the capsulorexis, as the leading edge of the anterior capsule might actually be redirected by these anteriorly displaced zonules. In order to overcome this, one typical technique is to create a smaller capsular axis than is usual. This could range in size from three and a half to four and a half millimeters. And I'll show an example of that in the upcoming case. So we start off as usual by creating a paracentesis. We then use tripan blue. And the reason for this is if we expect any issues with creation of the capsular axis, it's good to have great visualization of the anterior capsule. The tripan blue is then removed from the anterior chamber, followed by injection of a dispersive viscoelastic. A 2.4 millimeter keratome blade is then used to create a clear corneal incision, and this is followed by creation of a capsular axis with a cystotome and duet forceps. This is sped up, of course, but the point here is frequent regrasping of the anterior capsule and also making sure that we don't direct the leading edge into the zonule. So this is about three and a half to four millimeters in size. It's followed by hydrodissection, and then a divide and conquer technique to remove the cataract. Now, since this is a smaller rexus, there might be some difficulty removing the quadrants, and I'm gonna slow it down over here just to show you that. So the first quadrant, as it's coming out, has to be redirected to the side and then brought above the anterior capsule. From this point forward, the cataract surgery removal is pretty routine. We segment the lens into quadrants, followed by removal of the cortex. An Invista lens, 21 diopter, is placed in the capsular bag. This particular patient had elevated intraocular pressure compared to goal, and we planned streamlined canaloplasty with four different applications to treat several degrees of the canal. After the last application, an incisional goniotomy is performed by directing the cannula to the right and left in order to open up the communication between the anterior chamber and the canal. This is an image of the eye before the surgery was started, just so that you could see what the episcleral veins look like and that there was no blanching for 360 degrees. Now compare that to this image. The important point of what you're seeing here is that there is several areas of blanching of the episcleral vessels indicating uh, communication between the anterior chamber and the episcleral venous system. The remaining viscoelastic is then removed with the irrigation aspiration. And the wounds are checked to make sure that they're watertight and that's the end of the case. I'd like to point out other educational resources like keogt.com. You can visit my YouTube channel as well as follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more educational material. Thank you very much.